the it's called motor oil <laughs> he used motor oil you're like why did you use use motor oil because you're not supposed to use new motor oil no <laughs> anyway it protects it's a protectant it uh seals it from the water uh, protects it from bugs bugs don't want to eat that stuff. Good morning and welcome back to Falls Hillside Home. It's a beautiful morning here up on the hillside. Uh, today I'm going to start uh, staining the cabin. Uh, water sealing it, all that good stuff. Uh, at least get the first coat on today. And I'll show you what I'm going to be using here. This is motor oil. It's all kinds of oil. I don't know what weight it is. It's uh, truck oil, car oil, uh, tractor oil for sure. Uh, that I got from my uh, brother's wife's dad. He's got barrels of it, runs a welding shop uh, here in town. So anyway, uh, another way just to kind of save money and uh, do something that works. I really like the way it looks when you put it on there. I got a sample piece right here. You can see that was, I tested that about two or three weeks ago. Really like the way that looks. <clears throat> Might not be your cup of tea, but it certainly is mine. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go ahead and knock out uh, kind of a theory, if you will, questions that I've seen asked uh, other people. Of course, this is something I learned in YouTube. Love YouTube. Uh, I just learned a lot watching YouTube. So people say, hey, is it not going to make it more flammable? And my thought is no, not more than any other oil-based uh, stain or anything like that. I'm not necessarily, not. some people will mix this with uh, a diesel fuel. And uh, even diesel fuel has a high flash point from what I understand. I don't know, I've never pumped diesel, never used diesel in any way, shape, or form. So I really can't speak on it other than what I've researched. Uh, but motor oil, motor oil is to cool your engine. You know, getting hot and everything, or keep everything lubricated. You have your coolant to cool the engine too. But you know, my thought is as well, if you know, we're putting oil in a hot engine, maybe it's not that flammable. But gas is. We put that in the engine, right? But yeah, gas's job is to actually make a little explosion inside your vehicle to get those pistons going. Just turns the crankshaft and everything like that. Not a mechanic, but my understanding of how it works. So anyway, I'm gonna do a little demonstration here and show you how this is not any more flammable than, let's say, dry wood or using an oil-based stain. And I haven't tried this before, so maybe I'll be wrong. You'll see me uh, light something on fire. <laughs> uh, but first, actually, I'll just take uh, a little piece of scrap here, right? This brand new lighter. It's got a little flame on it. Uh, nothing, right? If I take it down here. Uh, see, it just goes out really quickly. Nothing really going on there. It's not really catching fire. So now what happens if we, <clears throat> excuse me, we take a little bit of 50, 30, 30, whatever weight. <laughs> Tractor oil, uh, it's nice and black, but as it dries and we uh, dry brush it and dry roll it, and I'll show you exactly the technique I'm gonna use for that. Painting's actually my family trade. I don't think I've shared that with you before. Although I've never used this. So, big test here. Nothing, right? Nothing at all. And I'm, I'm holding it there. Let's, let's hold it in one spot for a little bit. It's drying it off, but it's not catching fire. See? Well, I've got little spots, but that's all that it does. That's all it does. So, I'm not going to set my cabin on fire by using, you know, motor oil to stain the cabin. I'm not saying I won't set it on fire ever. I mean, I am using a wood stove. Uh, you know, there is a chance set on fire using that. I'm running electricity in the cabin. Uh, my old phone charger got hot last night, so I had to move it around. <clears throat> it's sitting on the wood floor. So yeah, I mean, it might burn down, but it's not gonna burn down because I put motor oil on the outside. But I understand why you guys asked that. I'm not trying to be uh, rude or hateful about it or anything like that. I just wanna show you that this is okay. Cool, cool, all right take you over here and show you exactly how I'm going to get started. Now I haven't put the trim on the cabin yet because I'm going to roll most of this out. 
and I can roll it a lot faster if I don't put the trim up first. And I still got some stickers to take off and things like that. I put some staples up to you know, keep the plastic on as it's raining, but there's no reason why I want to get this done today, so I don't have to worry about the rain. Uh, this oil is going to be, uh, you know, is going to seal it from the water. So anyway, I'm going to roll that, but up at the top here, you see the uh, rafters, you see the purlins that I still haven't touched. I got to brush all that in. And then uh, if I get it real thick on there, I might even take a rag and wipe it off a little bit. Uh, I won't have to do that with rolling. I can always dry roll it, but even up at the top of the wall where the paneling is, I'm gonna have to brush that down because the roller's not gonna get all the way up there, especially without hitting the tin. And I don't wanna get a whole bunch of oil on the tin. So uh, that's gonna be my method and you'll get to see a little bit of that. This will be a short video, uh, you know, for the staining and everything like that. But I'll definitely show you uh, what I'm gonna use here. Uh, you know what, I gotta grab a, another bucket because I wanna show you the whole full thing, okay? how we're going to do that our garage is a mess uh, it's been rainy and i've been just trying to get the uh cabin up so i can have a place to sleep i want to sleep in my own space i was staying at my brother's for a little bit it just got cold freezing temperatures and you know i got to show up to work and all that stuff so i'm gonna get sick but anyway uh here we are bag of truck just so I can show you what I'm going to be using of course uh it's a cabin again I'm not you know building a high-end house so I got just a cheap brush I think it's like a couple of bucks I reach a big box stores a uh, little Folgers cup because the oil don't really care what I put it in it's not going to react you know chemically to it not at least not within the amount of time it's going to take me to get that uh done you always want to have a rag uh do you wipe it off your face or um uh, I said I might wipe the uh, rafters off if it gets too thick. We'll just see how it's turning out if there's a uh, roller. And I didn't get the roller foam, but yeah, you know, you want a roller foam. I think it's like a two inch nap is what I'm using to soak up that oil. And because whenever you start rolling that cabin, that raw wood is really gonna soak it up. So you wanna really be able to load uh, that roller. And there's just a couple of bucks. This is a really handy tool, especially if you're gonna paint. And I don't really want to uh, get a bunch of uh, oil everywhere as I'm lifting the roller up. So what I'll do is I'll put the oil down in there. You dip this down in the oil, and then you can rub that roller up against that grate. Now we get the excess off, and that way you don't have a big sloppy mess. And this is really um, useful whenever you're doing an inside paint job and stuff like that. You don't want to, of course, you're going to lay down a drop cloth and everything like that, but. You don't want to get everything all over your drop cloth either. So uh, that's what I'm going to be using. I'll uh, get started here again. It's going to be a short video. If you got any questions about, um, you know, how the oil turned out or whatever, I'll keep you guys updated and I'll answer any type of questions the best I can. Again, uh, painting was family trade. My dad painted, my uncle painted, me and my brother repainted. Um, Dad's cousin Jerry and his son Shane painted uh, for a long time. And, of course, I joined the Navy thinking I was going to get out of painting houses. Uh, I wasn't painting houses, but I ended up painting the ship. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, uh, the fish were biting, and everybody else seemed like they got the fish off the, what we call the fantail. And since uh, my division owned the fantail, they put us out there painting, and it was painful. They were catching uh, mahi, uh, tuna, and I had to just sit there and paint. Uh, it was miserable. Anyway, uh, let's get started on this. I just want to give you a quick demonstration before I get up on the ladder. I'm not going to be able to give you a close demonstration like this when I get up there because obviously my hands are going to be full for safety reasons. Uh, I don't have anybody else here with me today. So I'll set the GoPro down. You can get some uh, footage from me painting from a distance. And uh, but for, the moment, uh, for the meantime, I'm going to show you this right here on this raw panel. Right, We'll pretend that I'm up there at the top uh, trying to get it all the way down so the roller can... Uh, you know get up there so here i got my little Folgers let's get a little bit of oil you need to get back baby you don't want that all right again this is just a little bit right i like to really load the brush up you know when i'm up there especially 
you know, trying to get those uh, pieces of two by six rafters and the purlins and everything like that. So, got a, now one thing you're gonna have to watch for, these do shed, so you know, keep that brush slick with the oil. Once you start feeling the resistance, those bristles are gonna fall out. So one thing I was telling you about, I know again, I'm gonna be wearing gloves when I do this. I'm wearing safety glasses too, because when I'm up there painting above my head, I don't want the oil to be in my eyes. That is a thing. Uh, so, but anyway, I'll show you what happens when you, you this is with any wood, right? The longer you leave that oil on there, the more it's gonna soak up into the wood and the darker that it'll be. And that's with stain too. I know, cause this is right now, this is just another stain. So you write that down, you kind of see the richness coming out, right? It's not just a solid black wall. It's actually gonna be a wood grain. Like it's almost aged, like it's been around for a while. And that's what I really like. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna have to, you know, really wipe down everything that's up there, but if I have to, I will. I'm thinking, you know, I'll just be able to brush that in and it'll soak in. But I'll uh, talk about that a little bit more as uh, the time goes by. Cool? Cool. So I got the uh, oil set up for the roller. Now I was wrong when I told you a two inch and a half earlier, just a uh, half inch. And I used a half inch on a smaller roller when I pre-rolled the those, uh, first two purlins that I put up. So anyway, real simple. So, Just like that. Not a big deal. And then screw that on. It is plastic. Uh, the metal, well, the poles with the metal threads are a lot better. They're a little bit more expensive. I was trying to be on a budget with this. And so these poles extend out. And I'll take you over here and show you how I roll. All right, so this is how I roll. Uh, so when you first start off, get that roller nice and wet and soak up all that oil. It doesn't matter if you're using paint, it's the uh, same principles, remain the same. Get that roller nice soaked up and use that strainer that I showed you earlier. Just kind of get the excess off. I have to start the top. See what's going on nice and thick, right? See me getting in between those beads. And generally, I like to roll from left to right. Just some on there and then. Whenever it starts to, and it's not covering so well, that's when you want to go down there and get some more oil, paint, whatever it is that you're using. Soak it up, then roll it on the strainer, get the excess off. And the reason I like to start it up is, you know, a lot of that's going to, you know, your excess, if you get too much on it, it's going to roll down. And we're going to roll down anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And I want to get one more pull from left to right up here. There we go, nice. I'm gonna 
temperature in coverage. Now you see how some of those, uh, I hope you can see that, some of the beads in there, not getting oil quite in it. You can just turn that corner in there, then you really get in there. That's if you need to. You're not always going to have to do that. Sometimes just a little bit more pressure with your pole. But then again, I'm not using a very high quality pole here and I don't want to break it. So I want to watch how much pressure I use on there. I need this pole to get me through the entire cabin. But anyway, that's our roll. There's Paris, hard at work, supervising. I cut down these little uh, pine limbs because they were getting in my way earlier with the ladder. And she has taken the opportunity to use that for a bed. Hey, baby. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Doing a good job supervising. Paris, the farm hill. I'm sorry, farm. The hillside. Paris, the hillside dog. Try and turn it into a farm. A little hobby farm. I always want to be a farmer. Anyway, back at it. All right, just finished uh, staining the cabin. I uh, didn't get any of the trim put on, so I'm gonna have to trim it out. I still need to put the windows in and stuff like that. So there'll be more stain going on on the trim uh, pieces. But let me show you what I got here. That yeah, looks pretty good. Got a few more minutes of uh, daylight left, so I might try to get that one window in right there. I found a good deal of windows down in uh, Chattanooga yesterday. Uh, so I'm eager to get those up and here to get this thing uh, finished. <laughs> All right, it is a cool, crisp morning here on the hillside. Love these spring mornings. Well, it's not quite turkey season yet, but it's getting close. And so oh, this will be a good morning to be turkey hunting. Heard owls hooting there in the background earlier. And uh, hear the crows. I love hearing stuff like that, man. Uh, me and my brother went on a fishing trip yesterday, so I took a little time off from the cabin build. Just to go uh, relax, caught a few crappie out of the kayaks there. But anyways, uh, I didn't want to do a video on that, but I uh, couldn't find the harness for my GoPro. But check what uh, I found. Actually, my cousin and her husband gave me all this tin. And I was just asking for a couple of pieces to, uh, you know, just to, for the firewall, for the stove. And they end up having all that, so I think I'm going to put that up on the ceiling as well now because it's free it looks cool and uh i just need to <laughs> get somebody up here to help me that's probably gonna be a two-man job there but i want to show you what i did this morning uh you know the other day i finished uh you know putting the stain on it and it's looking really good but i just put three windows up these two front ones I actually did these by myself too i thought i was gonna need somebody's help but yeah i just took it slow got up really early this morning and uh one thing i'll show you these windows I think these are so easy. They're, they have flanges on them, and these you had to actually bend out. They were flat when I bought them. Um, and I just, uh, you know, bent them out 90 degrees. It makes it so much easier. So once you get the rough cut, I gotta add a few screws there, I see, down at the bottom. Um, once you get the rough cut, you just place those in, uh, screw the flanges, and you're good to go. So now I'm about to start with the uh, trim not just the windows but the entire cabin but i'm going to start with the windows just because it's easier uh, it's not going to affect anything else that needs to be trimmed and i'll you know i want to start off with something kind of easy maybe feel like an accomplishment and then i can move on with the rest of the stuff but i know when i trim it i'm going to have to trim you know, uh, when it comes to the cabin i want to start with the uprights first and then trim the horizontals like up there where the uh, panels are meeting but here's the other uh window uh, another flange window and that was a lot easier than the uh, two big ones two big ones were kind of heavy but I've been working out for the past few years and it wasn't that bad but I no, I just want to share that with you so you know you can do this man I know some y'all are kind of hesitant and wondering you know if you have you know the skills or the knowledge to do it I've never built a cabin before and you see how mine's turning out so just do your due diligence and study and research a lot of resources out there on YouTube um and then again this isn't a how-to this is just me sharing with you how i'm doing it it's definitely not an instructional video uh but i want to tell you something about these windows as well you know i told you i got the tin for free well i got these windows uh for 125 dollars a piece uh found on facebook marketplace now i'm uh very hesitant about facebook marketplace 
this guy, you know, I'm not saying that he was uh, asking too much or anything like that, but I did find another guy with some tin, for example, and I asked for 10 pieces, and he's going to charge me 210 bucks uh, for that. So I want to say it's like 21 per sheet that he had, and I forget how long the sheets were. Uh, asked for 10 sheets, and it's like $210, and man, I just didn't want to spend that. You know, I'm kind of on a budget here. <laughs> If you know my story, uh, you know, kind of like the situation I'm in. Um, I'm not like, I'm not struggling financially, but I'm, I'm recovering, starting from, you know, pretty much nothing again, uh, you know, due to divorce and everything like that. And I'm not, you know, I don't want to get into all the divorce and the details of that, but uh, divorce is probably one of the things that will destroy you financially more than anything else. So it's hard to start over. Don't recommend it. Uh, but anyway, uh, I got that, I got those two windows at a store down in Chattanooga and I found on Facebook. And again, I was very hesitant and it started with a conversation. She's like, yeah, here's the uh, address. And I would have never found it if she hadn't given me that address. Uh, it ended up being like an old uh, rundown gas station that she took over and it's turning into like a liquidation uh, store. I guess, you, I guess that's the right word, liquidation. She gets the old stuff. Not, maybe not so old. I don't know how she gets there. There's nothing wrong with these. There was like a, you know, like a scratch on uh, one of the window frames, but it wasn't anything that I can't take care of with a little bit of paint and, you know, maybe, I don't even think these putty, I think paint would be fine over it. But uh, anyway, she gets it from these big box stores like Lowe's, Home Depot, and things like that. She had uh, packs of flooring for like 10, 15 bucks, you know, and if I remember right, I think that stuff's like 45 bucks per box. I got a Craftsman chainsaw for ninety dollars. You know, I definitely wanted like a oh, what was that? I think a Husqvarna or whatever it is. I don't know. I wanted one of the high ends because I want to be using a chainsaw uh, quite frequently. So I do need a, a high end chainsaw. Uh, any type of tool you get that you're going to use every day or every week, some you're going to use very often. You want to get the best that you can. Uh, but anyway. I'm kind of not there yet, and that was a good opportunity for get a, to get a chainsaw that will work for now. Um, I got a mailbox. I need to replace the mailbox now at the end of the road. It's still got the uh, old owner's name on it. Uh, I got that for 12 bucks. It was going like 30 to 40 bucks easy, and it, and it was a metal uh, mailbox. So anyway, there's probably a place like that, hopefully, uh, where you're at. Uh, but the thing is, like, look, go out there, kind of be patient. Try to put yourself in a position where you can get the best deal and uh you know start looking early that's kind of one of my problems i don't look early i kind of look right when i need it that's what happened to me with that stove pipe i wish i would have ordered all that stuff a long time ago but it is what it is live and learn right um, but anyway that's my recommendation and tip for you guys but anyway i hope you like the stain the it's called motor oil <laughs> he used motor oil you're like why did you use use motor oil because you're not supposed to use new motor oil no, <laughs> anyway, it protects, it's a protectant. It uh, seals it from the water, uh, protects it from bugs. Bugs don't want to eat that stuff. There's also little chips of uh, metal and things like that the bugs also don't want to eat through. It's just, and I think it looks cool, man. I really do. It's not flammable either. It's not any more flammable than wood. Just regular old wood. Uh, anyway, finished. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, let me know what you think about that. Used motor oil as a stain. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the like button, ring the notification bell so you can see uh, every time I post another video, I'll try to keep putting these out for you guys. Uh, right, so I like to leave like a little message of encouragement and hope at the end of these. And uh, just thinking about some of my interactions uh, with people here lately. Oh, check her out tore up her frisbee anyway uh there's a bible verse and i can't remember where it's at and i wanted to knock this uh video out real quick but you can you know look it up with a google search if you're interested to find the reference but anyway it says uh laughter is good medicine i don't know if i mentioned that already in these videos uh but that's just kind of on my mind today i like to laugh even at my expense sometimes make other people's uh, other people laugh and uh that's what i really try to do uh yeah, with these videos at times, if you ever say something silly or even dance, see me dance on air, you know, it's, uh, I expect you to laugh at it or, you know, laugh to it, with it, whatever. Because uh, laughter is good medicine. It makes, it makes us feel better. It brings our spirits up. All right, guys, I love y'all. Uh, take care. And uh, soon, 
Oh, we'll figure out what we're going to do next. I still got to finish putting up the uh, wood stove, so we'll probably do that here soon. All right, love you guys. Bye.